Good morning. Welcome to my podcast. My name is Karina and I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest. It is just before 6 a.m. I'm walking out to the barn to feed the horses. I have kind of a busy day ahead. We are getting ready to head out for the weekend. It is our anniversary next week and we thought we'd celebrate a little early it is t today is my sister's birthday happy birthday sister i have an oil change appointment i have to work a couple hours and i was kind of hoping to get out on a short ride on odin the mustang today so i don't know if all of that's going to happen um I suppose if anything doesn't happen, it, uh, it'll be, I won't ride, which is unfortunate. Here's the creek. If you haven't seen the walk out to the barn, this is the outfall side where the big pool is. This is the upstream side, little creek. Um, you see the mossy rocks, cedar branch. There's the house. There's the barn. I have to duck under the fence. As I was saying, it'd be nice to get all of those things done today, um, but I just really don't know how long the oil change is going to take. Um, well, it's not an oil change, it's actually more of a service appointment. So, um, Randy got a new vehicle the other night, which is great because he's if you haven't been with me before, uh, I'm just looking at the horses over there. Um, he got hit in an intersection just before Christmas and it's just taken a really long time to resolve. Part of it is it just took a long time for the insurance company to, to decide that the vehicle was totaled. So he got another vehicle, same thing. Toyota 4Runner. We'll be taking that to Wenatchee and um, I'm inside Braggy's stall getting ready to grab his hay bag. We had planned to go skiing but there's actually very little snow in the mountains right now um, so I think we're going to do other things. Um, there's a nice river trail we could take bikes, um, maybe look at some property, kind of daydream about retirement and all that. Anyway, I'm going to get to feeding the horses. I'll talk to you soon with some knitting content. Good morning again. It is just before 7. Pardon me while I pick up a feed bag. Um, I was hoping to record the knitting portion of my podcast. I'm in the garage. <laughs> Um, between feeding horses and, um, having to go to, to town, uh, I'm meeting my friend for coffee this morning, so I have my work backpack with my computer for my, um, auto appointment. Um, anyway, Braggy was really struggling this morning, so he was just pretty anxious about being in his own stall, uh, eating breakfast, which is what we do every morning, um, and why some mornings are different, I couldn't really say. Um, this morning was different, so I tried helping him by playing a target game in his stall so that he would uh, you know, develop some good feelings about it. But every time I walked out of the stall, he would kind of follow me and start pacing by the gate again. Or I had to kind of shoo him back into his pen to eat his breakfast. So, and the reason why I do this is because um, I want to teach braggy some independence i mean odin is fine with it he is in his stall eating his breakfast but braggy is super dependent on odin and 
what I want. I'm trying to shut the garage and it's not responding. Um, because sometimes I take Odin away to go riding and, um, you know, he just, he just really needs to learn that he's going to be okay, uh, without, without Odin. Um, so I don't like to keep him penned up for very long. Uh, I just don't think it's very nice, but as a matter of perspective, um, they are penned up, um, while I do my errands this morning and, and work for a couple hours and stuff like that. So again, it's not the whole day. Uh, typically they have all that time together that they need, um, maybe more than they need, and they have plenty of places to walk around and they are not confined to stalls. I have pretty good paddocks. So, um, you know, a lot of this is just my own guilt and not being able to keep things in perspective. So, um, I'm at the entrance of my driveway and I just really don't want to drive in video at the same time. So, and then, well, I have to wait for traffic anyway. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do, I mean, I've already made this decision that they are going to be in their pens while I'm out. When I get back, I will, um, let them out and then hopefully go for a ride that's that's my intention so we'll see I'm going to be on my way and I hope to see you for a knitting portion and possibly a trail ride good afternoon everyone welcome to the knitting portion of my podcast you will have gathered by now that there were a lot of horsey activities today and I just got back from riding which is why my hair is wet and um, because I got up just out of the shower. So pardon me for the somewhat unfinished look. So I have no finished objects to show you today. Um, I am wearing the Odina, no, Udina, U-D-I-N-A sweater. It's a, I believe it was a free pattern by Barocco. Um, it just has a central cable and uh, raglan uh, three quarter length sleeves and the yarn is also a bar Barocco um, it's a worsted weight I want to say it was vintage but I honestly don't remember and I probably wasn't keeping that great of notes in um, Ravelry at the time so I could certainly link that page uh, project page for you but I honestly don't know whether it'd be that helpful so the reason why I'm wearing this sweater today is that it was sunny and it's not warm enough to be considered spring, but we are getting a lot more light now and the, uh, the birds, um, what am I trying to say? The chirpy birds are back. The little songbirds are back. I mean, we always have some chickadees and I think pine siskins all winter long, but it's the more the wrens and um, those types of birds that are back. And uh, then I've seen some uh, some kind of woodpecker too. I heard one uh, when, when I got back and also uh, it flew over. So I was inspired to wear this kind of, I mean, it's worsted. So it's definitely a cooler spring sweater. I guess it's really the color and maybe the lengths of the sleeves that really kind of make me think it's a spring sweater. So let me show you my progress. Um, the cowl, the scarf that is now going to be a cowl is really coming along. Uh, I took the knitting needle out so you can see. I'm not sure where I left off last time, but you can see these winter motifs and then a transition to purple and this is kind of a snowflake. This section took me a few days. The next section is also kind of a snowflake type motif. Um, I guess this is a sm snowflake type motif and this is the tree section. I did baubles in this section. I don't love the baubles. They are optional. I will probably opt to not do that. Um, I don't honestly don't remember what that is. This seemed kind of church window-ish. Um, these are snowmen. Hopefully you can see those. 
um, the snowman, the white snowman with the color in between. And then these are reindeer. I think um, I have probably five to seven motifs left. Um, till I finish, I am going to do another snowman and um, reindeer motif at, at the top, um, which kind of doesn't make sense because they are going to be gathered here together. But maybe what I will do is I was thinking of unraveling this whole bottom section, um, but maybe I won't. Maybe I'll leave that as a spacer. So this is what the cowl. This is what it's going to look like as a cowl, and it's going to be more of an infinity cowl with possibly even a twist in it. I haven't quite decided. Fingering weight yarn. Um, the light color is just a finger undyed polka dot creek yarn. All the motifs are made out of scraps or and or advent minis, mostly scraps. Although some of these, I think this like sparkly ones were Advent minis from Polka Dot Creek. That was the 2023 Christmas or Advent bundle. Patterns by Pacific Nitco, which is a local designer uh, in Seattle. Seattle is, I just dropped this, the little scrappy yarn. So um, this is how much of the purple I have left. Um, Seattle is south of here by uh, an hour or so. So. We are located way up by the Canadian border. I, I really kind of forgot to do a proper introduction because, uh, you know, when I do the morning, the morning routine first, um, I say I'm from the Pacific Northwest, um, and then you know I have horses. Um, I also live here with my partner. Uh, we are celebrating our 17-year anniversary, celebrating this weekend. It is actually next week, I th although I think I said that. Um, and we also have two kitties. So if you have been following me along for a while, you have certainly seen photos of the kitties and maybe just for fun, I will include one at the end of this video. Um, and maybe a couple photos from the trail ride too. So continuing on with the whip parade. I, um, working on this sock. So this sock is from 52 Weeks of Socks. I am knitting the, the first one, which is intersections. It's a, it's a cable pattern. The yarn is Patton's Croy. So just a little bit thicker um, fingering weight yarn. And I am doing it out of this this yarn which is blue raspberry colorway um i think um the cables are showing up nicely you might remember from last time that i had to rip it out because i had oh i'm about to drop some stitches so let me pardon me for a moment um you might remember that i uh had this sock knitted all the way up past the um the heel and was going up the leg and then I realized it was way too big. Um, my gauge was fine. It's just that I have a skinny foot. So the pattern the, for the small of this pattern, um, it's the small is nine and a half foot, foot circumference. Um, well, my foot circumference is eight and a half. So that would have been way too much positive ease for a sock, so. I am still just kind of trying to fix this. And I don't have my glasses on, so that's not helpful either. But let me see if that does it. Or maybe I'll just put these both on here and fix it when I have my glasses on. That would be smart, wouldn't it? So I'm at the point where I am going to start the heel. Uh, sort of start the gusset of the heel. And that will give me the correct amount of ease for the sock. So I haven't had a lot of chance to, to knit on it. Um, but this is kind of my midday knitting and I honestly, with the weather being as it, it's been pretty nice, I haven't stayed indoors for lunch or anything like that. And I haven't had very many Zoom meetings where I can just um, listen and learn. I've had to participate. So drink, drinking water. And my final whip 
is um, the Riverside sweater that I ripped a pretty good chunk out, basically the body out. Actually, I'm going to put this down here and started re-knitting it. So it's getting much more brown. There's still, it, I just, I kind of doubted myself on this. No, this is not what I ripped out. So this red's gonna stay. Um, I basically ripped back all the way up to, up to this motif and then started um, using more of the brown and the white. So the brown and white yarn are from local sheep, local sheep farmer. It's a rustic yarn. Um, this is colorway is fromage, and this colorway is truffle, and then the red is a patens uh, worsted. So, um, so this is the section that I'm just finishing. It was supposed to be. I think the background color was red with some brown and white as the accents, and I really didn't like that. It was just way too red. So and now I think I'm knitting, uh, I think three stripes of the main color, which is the brown. So it, that's gonna give me an adequate amount of brown that I think I'm gonna be happy with this. With this. So um, still kind of strikingly red, but I think it's, I, I think it's a lot better. And I don't know, I might redo this sleeve so it, it more matches this sleeve. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that as I go along. But it's, it's, it took me a long time to get, get going on this sweater because it was just, well, you know, it's demoralizing when you have to frog your knits. Um, by the way, I am having a, if you need inspiration, I am having a knit along or make along. It's Frog My Knits 2024. Um, so you can hashtag that. Or you, I have a thread set up on Ravelry, which... To be fair, I have not checked recently, so um, there haven't been there hasn't been much participation, which which is fine. I mean, mostly for me, the reason why I set it up is to be accountable. If um, if anyone needs me to be more active on that, please let me know, uh, and I will be more diligent at it. Or feel free to leave your comments here if you'd like to participate in this way. I do plan on um, giving out a prize. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. It will be a drawing either from the comments from all the uh, the Ravelry thread or if there's hashtags or, or stuff like that. So I will figure that out. That'll be uh, end of November because um, um, I have probably more than one project to frog. I can think of a pair of socks where I, I did the toe up like I'm doing the intersection socks and made them too big just because I didn't know. And I basically finished two pairs of socks before I tried them on, which is silly. Why does anyone do that? Um, and then I have another sweater that I am going to lengthen. So those, all that to say, those types of projects count. Like if you, you know, maybe you don't need to frog the whole thing or even most of it, you just need to frog some of it and, and modify it so that it makes you happy. That is the point of this um, knit along is um, to frogs a project that maybe isn't giving you joy and um, making it into something that does. That is all the knitting content I have for you today. I am going to get ready and get packed for the weekend and um, I'll take some footage or at least at the, at the very least I'll have some uh, photos for you. So on that note, um, have a good weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.